I don't know. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to She Blurbs Podcast. Today's guest is Hillary. Hi, Hillary. Hi there. <laughs> Welcome to my podcast. <laughs> so I've got two great books to tell you about. <laughs> That's awesome. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about your books? I can. So my first one that I published is called Where Does She Fit In? And my second one that just came out yesterday is called Piglets for Christmas. Which, even though it's book number two, is actually the first one I wrote. <laughs> That's cool. So can you tell our listeners about the two books? I can. So Piglets for Christmas was because I have had this farm for just over a year. And we had our first batch of piglets. And because we didn't plan on the pregnancy, we also couldn't plan for the delivery date. And so we kept thinking we we're going to have these babies. And we thought we were going to have Halloween babies, and they didn't come. So we thought we'll have Thanksgiving babies, and they didn't come. So we thought we'll have Christmas babies, and we hoped for it all month. And then one week before Christmas, they were born. And so in this story, it's about my kids thinking that these are the best Christmas presents they're ever going to have. And it talks about that pursuit for their Christmas gift. And it's a little surprising end in the end. Um, and that's kind of where my journey started. So I streamed videos about my pig and her pregnancy and people wanted more. And so then they wanted to know everything about pruning trees to unclogging my tractor. And I call it accidental farming. Um, you know, my family's been in farming since 1200s, but my mom and dad never farmed. And so it skipped a generation, landed on me, this girl's favorite movie in the whole world is Charlotte's Web. And I have a two acre fixer upper mess of a farm that we have turned into home. And we have with every animal short of a zebra. And we accidentally farm. You know, our first year of harvest, we'd have really beautiful things and then we'd have flops that were just heartbreaking. And people wanted to know about both. They wanted to know about the good stuff and the bad stuff. <laughs> and so I started writing in December of last year when the piglets were born. I was so excited and inspired. I wrote it in an hour and a half. And then I started to write about other things. So where does she fit in? It's all about bullying. I had this cute little odd, strange appearing guinea hen. And I naturally assumed when she was done with the heat lamps that she would go into the barn with all the chickens and the rooster and live in harmony. And they were so mean to her. And tried to hurt her. And so I took her out and we felt awful. And I thought, what am I going to do? And so I gave her to the cows and the sheep and the goats. Just to see what would happen. And it was beautiful. It's like, I literally cried. So she hopped on top of Bessie, who's my, my favorite cow. And started pecking the flies off of her. And Bessie, who's very temperamental, loved her and was snuggling her. And I thought, no way. So then the second cow came and lay down and she jumped on his back and she pecked all the flies off of him. So one by one, my silly little sheep Lambert and my goat Jean-Paul Gaultier and Wilbur and Luna, the pigs, they all came up to her and lay down in a circle. And she just went from animal to animal taking the flies off. So then it was this time. They were all in the barn snuggled up to go to sleep. And they let her get right in the middle of them. And they all snuggled up against her and they all slept together. I bawled like a baby. And it dawned on me that we pursue in life trying to please each other. And to fit into groups or demographics or, or collections of people by interest. And really, we're designed to be around the people who love us for who we are. And so here we're sitting here trying to take this guinea hen and force her in this chicken surround because that's where she belongs, right? And it wasn't. She just wanted to be around people who loved her. Those chickens were never going to appreciate her, you know? And so I thought, man, I got to keep writing. And if that means I'm talking about disability and I'm talking about body image and comparison and I can break down some of these ucky walls that mankind does to each other well that's gonna be okay with me so that's what mm -hmm. i intend to do so sweet oh, almost cried a little you oh. know kids understand farm animals and so you don't have to say this is a book about bullying you can literally just let them figure it out for themselves mm -hmm. they'll get it 
That's you know, sweet. they don't want to be preached to. They just mm-hmm. want to know they're not alone. That's and I would true. say during the coronavirus shutdown, we saw a skyrocket in children's suicide. And it, it breaks my heart. It just does. And I think, man, if, if you can start at a young level and instill, you are beautiful, you are made for a purpose, inside of you is greatness, and if the people around you don't recognize it, you're standing next to the wrong person. Mm-hmm. You know, if we can do that when kids are little, we won't have the ugliness we have in the media. We just won't. You it's know, and true. you got to make it in a, in a package they can understand. Mm-hmm. And why not farm? That's true. What did your kids think about the transition from moving on a farm? They, they were so excited for the first month. And then, you know, they have chores. Of course, they're <laughs> rewarded, but they have chores. And there are days where they can't wait to get outside. And there's days where they're like, seriously. And they'll say, do you want to move? And they'll say, no. <laughs> <laughs> a couple weeks ago, we had no plans for our baby lamb to be born. We thought we still had two weeks left. We thought we had done the calendar appropriately. And, and we're eating dinner. And my son runs in. He's like, it's time. And we spent the next four hours eating dinner in the barn, delivering a baby. So on those days, it's worth it to them to have the chores that they have. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So how many animals do you have again? Like what kind oh. of animals? I have two cows, two sheep and a baby lamb. I have one grown goat and two Nigerian baby goats who are beautiful. They look like caribou. I have two mini pigs and a baby mini pig. I have seven egg layers, one rooster. Two guinea hens, three baby turkeys. I have four silkies, three Polish, one phoenix, six ducks, a giant emotional support turkey, a bunny (laughs) rabbit, four dogs, seven cats, and a rat that just went and saw Jesus last week. Oh, Oh, wow. You had a rat? We did. We loved her. Her name was Madeline. She would give kisses. (laughs) <laughs> that's cool oh she was God. a couple of time but it was sad yeah how do you manage all of those animals like it just sounds so, like a lot my kids have morning feeding monday through thursday and then we help friday saturday sunday then they have morning feeding and lock up in the evening time and we help them most of the evenings and then um Saturdays are our longer day where we scoop poop or that kind of thing but we now have such a great um kind of flow like we know all of the shred and the straw goes into these waste containers and gets driven out to what we call fox mountain we're very lucky so our property is very deep it's skinny but it's deep and there's no one on the surround of our back property and so we have a hill where we do all of our composting and so it gets dumped out there every saturday and we put a new shred and everything's all neat and tidy and then we have like seasonal chores like pruning after harvest like those kinds of things and a lot of bigger items my husband and I do. So, yeah, it's just cyclical, really, because we both work full time. My husband has his own plumbing company. I'm actually a CFO for a farming company doing all of their agricultural books. So, a little farm on this completely on the side. And we've been homeschooling for the last five years as well. They're just now going into private school, I mean, into public school. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. And then, you know, we have, we have church and other interests. So, we keep ourselves nice and busy. You know, I think it's just about being um, responsible. If you think about it, most of us in our daily lives have a fair amount of, like, television time. So we're just swapping that out for some active chores. And honestly, the animals are far more entertaining. Mm -hmm. I mean, we laugh all the time. (laughs) We just moved the bunny into the chicken coop. And she's like King Kong. And (laughs) she's everyone. And this giant turkey, I have, like, a 35-pound turkey. She's terrified (laughs) of the bird. And she jumps into the air and she sees her and goes flying around. The the sheep is afraid of the bunny and the bunny is like six inches long. <laughs> These books write themselves. I can't even make this stuff up. It's hysterical. <laughs> so are you working on any other books? Any other children's I books? I am. So Which Dog is Best is coming out this October. And that's a book that fights comparison. And I'm writing that one because of my children. They ask some very penetrating questions. And I think among siblings specifically, and then also just among peers and demographics, people will say, well, who's best at this? Who's best? Who's the best this? Who's the best that? And I think that there's such 
danger in comparison because you wrap up your identity in it. And really, when you look at how we're all different, it's all things to celebrate. But siblings can sit there and say, oh, well, you're better at this. I'm better at that. And they assess value to that. And it's dangerous. And so my son asked me this question. We have four dogs. And he said, who's best? Who's the best dog? And I was like, he just gave me a book. <laughs> and you'll have to stay tuned to see how it ends. But it's, it's how I parent. Nothing I write is fiction, although it's considered children's fiction for terms of sales. That's the category they put me in. But it all really happened. So I'm like, is wow. it fiction? Yeah. All the stories, they all happened here. Every single one. I and love how you write so quick. Yeah. I love how you parent. Like, you don't favor any of your kids. Like, my mom favors my brother more than me. And I like the parenting you do. Like, you don't pick and choose what parent. I mean, what kids. My mom, my mom was the baby of nine. And my grandfather was really guilty of that. Um, and I just, my mom wasn't like that with me. I never wondered. We, here's how we explain to our children differences. I told them, yeah. I think God gives everybody a hundred percent, but it's like your mind or, and your soul are like um, clay and he pushes his fingers down into the clay. Now where he pushes his fingers will be different for every human being. So like my brother's extremely artistic. He, he borders on genius, but there are areas where he struggles, right? Because the bulk of his hundred percent is in this Mount Everest called art. Where for me, my mountains are more like hills, but they're pretty evenly distributed, which means life's pretty easy for me, right? I'm pretty good at math. I'm pretty good at English. I'm pretty good at books. I'm pretty good at this. I may not have a Mount Everest, which makes me incredible at anything, but I'm okay at a lot of things. So life comes pretty easy to me. Whereas then if you look at my art versus my brother's, there's no question this is hands down superior it doesn't make him better than me it doesn't make me better than him it makes us different and i've had people say yeah but that doesn't really work if you have cerebral palsy or Down syndrome and i said you clearly never volunteered time in an educational atmosphere for children with disabilities because the love and empathy i saw was the biggest mountain i've ever seen for love in my life I'm like, you got it twisted. They mm -hmm. just have valleys that are all you can see. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's and so true. I told my kids, like for my daughter, you're amazing at math and English and it makes school very easy to you where your brother is a genius with robotics and physical dance movement. He mm -hmm. tests very high on the right brain. She tests very high on the left brain. They have 100%. It's just in different areas. And I really want these books to portray that to kids because if you know who you are and who you were made to be and what you're beautiful at, you'll celebrate, not compare. You know, yes. if everybody was like me, we'd be one boring world. <laughs> the fact that I brought people to me is because I'm different than they are. Mm -hmm. And they're beautiful because when they stand next to me, I look different. And I'm beautiful because when they stand next to me, I'm different. It's my uniqueness that makes me beautiful, not because I'm inherently beautiful on my own. But because mm -hmm. I'm standing next to somebody who looks different than I do, I told him, get out your crayon box and now take one color and fill your crayon box. Now tell me if you're excited about that box. <laughs> like you'll say no, you know? And so I think kids can handle that kind of content if you just package it in a way that they understand. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you sit there and you tell them, oh, we, everybody's a winner and we don't want you to feel bad about yourself. But if you demonstrate it through a story, they get that. And it'll, it'll translate for them when they're going through their life. And then the cool thing is in the back of every book, I put a set of questions and that's meant to be answered as a family. So those questions can really help bridge a gap when parents don't really know what their kids are feeling. And then if they go to my website, there's a Christian pair devotional they can read. And that's the faith component. So yes, I am a Christian writer, but my stories don't inherently mention Christianity at all. It's not until you go to my website to see the devotional that you see that connection that I'm hoping people will do. But mm -hmm. if they can start with the conversations, that's cool. Fitting, um, where does you fit in? The conversation at the back of the book is all about bullying. And it may be the first time a child actually admits to their parent that they're being bullied. Or they yeah. may be the one that's guilty of it and they don't even realize it. And those mm -hmm. questions might say, oh, am I being empathetic? Am I being kind? Yikes. You know, either transformation is important to me. 
That's true. Wow. So we'll see. That's really good. I see a lot of books in your future. (laughs) I actually have the outline for nine more. I just need to sit down. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. I definitely see it. (laughs) And I I told told my husband, I'm like, the animals pay for themselves. (laughs) <laughs> so on your website that I linked below, they can go and purchase uh, your children's books. It'll give them it'll give them the information for where to purchase. So I'm on Amazon and I'm on Barnes and Noble. Um, pretty much anywhere books are distributed. So my distributor is called Ingram, and they put books in almost every store in the world. Oh, so wow. that's how I went that route. Yeah, so I was able to self publish. I literally, from the time I put my pen on paper until you have it in your hand, it's all me. Wow. I did the whole thing. Yeah. There was the learning curve for me. I just knew I wanted it to be a specific way. And I knew the more I did on my own, the more I could lower the price. Mm-hmm. And then I could put it in here. So I also have donated it to some of my local libraries because I was a lower income child. And I know the power of reading. And I don't want money to ever be a reason someone can't. You know, if I get an email from a child compelling me, telling me we have no money, I would love a book. You know, I'm putting it in the mail. You know, I just want to be a reason. That's amazing. That's amazing. You have a really good heart because a lot of people are not that that nice. (laughs) Well, you know, I think it's all just Jesus. Like, I just know what I'm a recipient of. And so I just want to pour that out to other people. I was a yard sale kid. I was a hand-me-down kid. And I turned out just fine. And I I don't want people to think that money is what it's about. I mean, I'm, I'm... I'm a CFO now. I have a master's. I was the first one in my family to go to college. My grandparents didn't even get to high school, right? And I don't want kids to think that money or socioeconomic placement is what makes you. It's your heart. Your yes. heart's all. And if you're willing to work hard and be kind, you can move up in the world. You just it's have true. to. You know? So, I don't know. I just want people to feel the love that I felt growing up. I think if we're in a dark place, instead of amplifying that we're in a dark place, be the light. You're going to fix it if you're loving and kind all the time. Yeah, that's true. That's like true. Me. <laughs> I want to thank you so much, Hillary, for coming on my show today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, everyone. I want to thank you all so, so much for listening to my interview with Hillary. If you would like to purchase her books or see where to purchase her books, you can go to her website. If you want to know more information about her farming and um, how she raises her animals and stuff, things like that, you can go to her website. It's linked below. It's called uh, littlefarmmama.com. Thank you all so much for supporting me and thank you all so much for listening. I really greatly appreciate it. Have a great day.